Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is another edition of Tottenham Transfer Talk today with Jack Bryden. How are you, Jack? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, it's a bit of a special today, Jack, because, um, you know, far be it from Spurs to have, as we had so far, a very plain sailing closed season. Everything going to plan. Poch keeps his players, he gets the players in he wants, and then just four days before the start of the season, a spanner in the works. Who goes to pot? Paul Mitchell. Our uh, uh, scouting guru, who we stole from Southampton, uh, a good ally of Poch's, he has handed in his resignation, as has Rob McKenzie, who is our head of player identification. Jack, what was your instincts when you heard about this last night? Shock. I began to just think, oh God, what's going to happen now? Like you say, it was clean, it was plain sailing, made some signs that we needed, yep. and there was a potential one this George and Cooley thing, which we'll yeah. talk about later, um, seemed to be dragging on a bit. So whether that's got something to do with it, it can't I don't be know. coincidence, can it? Can it yeah. be coincidence? I'm nervous. My instincts were first nerves. How is Pochettino going to react to this? You know, what's it all about? What's happening behind the scenes? And my second thought is, it just feels like it gives the press permission. Yeah. Now, if we get a bad result against Everton on the opening day, which could happen, it's a tough place to go. We only drew there last year. The press suddenly writing about, oh, it's all going wrong behind mm -hmm. the scenes. And before that, it just seemed like everything was going so well and you don't need to give the press that permission. No, that's right. And it's not ideal just before the season starts. It's four days until we, we play that game against Everton. And yeah, as I said, it's not ideal. The players, whether they'll affect them or not, I doubt it. But I also think as, as much as all the questions that came into my head when I read this about Paul mm -hmm. Mitchell. Um, you've got to hope that he has set some things in place. You know, I read that we made a statement saying that he has staffed that area of the, the Right, the he's team. got the whole and, scouting network together. Yeah, yeah, so you'd hope that that's all been sorted before he would it'd be a good enough bloke to settle that up before he goes away. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know him, so who knows, but... Um, well, I should say, um, the, the story coming out of Tottenham Hotspur is that uh, he will uh, carry on with the club until a specified date, which is very rare. Usually what they do is put someone on gardening leave straight away. It's six um, months, I think. Yeah, like a, okay, a six months thing. apparently. Also rumours that uh, Leicester, who obviously lost their director of football, Steve Walsh, to Everton, might be sniffing about. Now, that to me, out of all the stuff I've heard, seems like the most realistic. If Leicester have come in with their tie on his ship, uh, they've lost their director of football and gone, uh, we'll give you a lot of money to become our director of football. That is, of course, a step up yeah. for Paul Mitchell. And he would probably then want to take the guy he works with, Rob McKenzie, with him. To you, does that seem the most likely situation? Or is it solely, dare I say, it, another matter of Daniel Levy not um, making someone feel comfortable enough in their job? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like... Um same with anything. When it comes to football, things seem to ideas and things seem to go out the window. If someone came to you, offered you more cash to do a similar job, or give you more responsibility, you would take, you would snap it up. Mm -hmm. So it could be that, and you know, you, it's, it, it strikes seems, me if it was as simple as that, though, wouldn't Daniel Levy just go straight away? Okay, we'll 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 raise your money because you've done a good job for us. Let's think of some of the players he's got in: Eric Dyer, Deli Ali, basically the fulcrum of our midfield is is as a result of him. Now, obviously. Let's play devil's advocate here. Also responsible for Benji Stambouli and Federico Fazio. But um, other players, you know, Wanyama and Jansen, we've got high hopes for them. And they have all come as a result of Paul Mitchell having come in and worked with Maurizio Pochettino. So if I were Daniel Levy and it weren't about the fact that maybe they're not getting on, if it were as simple as money, you'd say, you know, offer him, offer him the money. Yeah, but it's Daniel Levy we're talking about, yeah. isn't it? So, you know, I mean, th some of those players, not the best players, but then he, like you say, he has brought in players, Toby Alderweireld, yeah, um, Kevin example. Vimmer, you know, yeah. that list goes on. Trippier, who's not yeah. been, you know, he hasn't yeah. had the, the best, um, he hasn't had the most chances no, in our team. I think he's a great squad player, he's, though, he's I really do. And, and I always am a bit worried about people who say he's not good enough. I think if he had got a run of 10 games, he'd prove himself to be an excellent fullback and also fantastic deliverer of the football. Let's move on to the George, Kevin and Kudu deal. This seems to me, like I mentioned before, too much to be coincidence. Um, the deal was done th over three and a half weeks ago now uh, and the rumours coming out that, uh, at first that we were waiting for Clinton and G uh, who's rumoured to be going on loan to Marseille as part of the deal for his visa to come through that has now come through the deal's still not been done then other rumours that maybe Nkudu had some kind of um, injury issue in the medical uh, but that doesn't seem to be correct and now the latest rumour is that Daniel Levy tried to do what we call a Levy yeah. and uh, basically shoot down the price of the deal because Marseille have had a change in ownership. He's now, the, the thing I last read was that 
from 13 and a half million that it was going to be up front he's lowered it to four and a half million with add-ons up to about 11 that's just you know if you were any business and that happened to you you'd tell them where to go wouldn't you yeah definitely. it's madness i admit that this whole i'm not going to pretend that i know what's going on with this thing because it just seemed it's been a circus from start to finish because yeah. you, you heard about it everyone was waiting for it to get announced and we're still waiting yeah and then this happens with mitchell and you you begin to think hang on what's going on here yeah so, no smoke without fire surely yeah so whether this is going to happen or not is anyone's guess yeah it, you know it might not even happen now so do you yeah you think it's probably dead in which case and G will come back and he, he'll have a chance I thought he was raw last season but he's got all the tools and maybe he'll get more of a shot well, a lot of people were complaining that uh, we were losing one player to bring in a player that was pretty much similar exactly the same. Yeah. so I th I wasn't really that um, happy with and G not be being given the shot that he probably should have deserved yeah, he was injured, he injured last season as well yeah uh, he had injuries and yeah he didn't get the rub of the green with, with performances uh, with appearances sorry so if he left uh, if he stays sorry I think it's a good thing for him because yeah. like you say he gets more of a chance and yeah. he gets to prove himself okay one last thing um, I wonder whether will this almost give permission for Daniel Levy once again to try and bring in a director of football something he's oh, tried a few times before Damien Camoli, Franco Baldini uh, at the end of last season when Maurizio signed his new contract he was changed from the title of head coach to manager which seemingly gave him much more of a say over all things in terms of the clubs so I'm hopeful that this time Pochettino will will have his choice of whatever happens however if Levy decides to bring in a sporting director is that something that would worry you and for me, if that were to happen, the, the person he has to go all out for is Sevilla's Monkey, who's the guy who's been there. Uh, I don't know if it's Monkey or Monchi, but he's the guy who's been there for years and basically brought through, uh, signed all those players. Read an article about him. He's thorough. He has a proper database of players. But we're a bit wary of, of a sporting director. Well, this we? is the thing. I mean, Arneson came in. He had yeah. the record that he had at PSV. Uh, yeah. Um, so he scouted like Ronaldo and players like that. That's right. So you look at his record, but then his record when he came to the club was seen as Timotei Atuba exactly so it was seen as you Nordin know Nabe. he did alright for the season um, and yeah, I think so the, this sporting yeah. director thing it is something that I always when Pochettino came in and Mitchell came in it was like right okay it's a fresh it's a fresh start it's a new outlook for the team it's a new uh, ethos at the team as yeah. well and I was really positive about that and I was glad to see the back of a director of football yeah. or technical director or whatever yeah. these people are called and well, the thing is about the Pochettino and Mitchell axis is that it's worked. Yeah. That's the thing. It's so clearly it's worked. And that's why, you know, I think a lot of fans will be scratching their heads saying, how has Daniel Levy let this happen? And especially if it's a personality clash of some sort or he hasn't been letting Mitchell do his job or Mitchell has got wound up about Levy constantly lowering the price tags uh, of the players he's trying to buy at the last minute. Maybe he's undermining him. And if you're Daniel Levy, at some point, you've just got to take your hands off, concentrate on the stadium aspect of it. Uh, I guess the reality is, Jack, you know, we won't know the answer maybe ever but certainly yeah. not for a while whilst uh, Mitchell is still working for the club my mate sent me a text saying I have no doubt that Daniel Levy will be sending Paul Mitchell to bizarre corners of the earth right now mm. <laughs> just to say it. that serves you right for re resigning but uh, let's hope it's all above board and most importantly I think you'd agree Pochettino uh, isn't too devastated by it and uh, doesn't make any rash decisions yeah this is the thing we, we like we said yesterday we our full faith is in Pochettino so you've got to hope that everything is above board and planned and yeah absolutely that. and that everything works out okay okay guys let us know what you thought uh, of the Paul Mitchell uh, resignation and whether you think the George Kevin and Kudu deal will go through what will happen to Clinton and G uh, let us know all about that what you think about it in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Spurred on TV and most importantly with three days left till the big Everton opener come on you Spurs come on you Spurs 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 yeah, to talk about the top 10 summer signings oh, yeah, summer. of all time in the Premier League era. 